Hi I'm Monk and this is the Monk way. Let's look at the best way to start investing in the stock market. I'll go over some frequently asked questions by beginners, the steps you need to take to begin buying stocks, finding your first stock, and much more in this detailed video. You should be ready to invest in your first stock after watching this. Subscribe and hit that bell for more stock market videos. I make them every day to keep you investing, and leave a like if you were a beginner once. Make sure to check out my stock market group. I post every single trade I make, along with instant emails to you guys. My portfolio is over $300,000 right now. Recent winners include Aurora Cannabis, up 100% in just a few months, this is over $15,000. Canopy Growth, up 25% for a quick $5,600 profit. Look in the description or comments for a 50% off coupon, this offer ends very soon so don't miss out. Step 1. Understanding Investing Before you start, you should understand the basics of the stock market. So here are simple answers to the most common questions. What is the stock market? The stock market is a place where shares of companies are traded. If a company wants more money to invest in itself, they can sell pieces of their company to the general public. People like you and me can own very small percentages of these companies by buying shares or stocks from other owners. This means if you buy one share of Apple, you own a very small piece of Apple. How does a stock price move up and down? The price is determined by supply and demand, so the more demand for a company, the higher the stock price. Public perception of the company determines how high or low the price goes. If a company releases good news like selling more products than expected, more people will want to buy the company, causing the price to go up. If a company released bad earnings numbers, meaning less profits than expected, less people will want the stocks, causing a price drop. When selling a stock, the seller names the price, so if public perception is good, they can name a higher price, the buyer also names a price, if both prices meet, a trade is made. This is why a stock's value is determined only by perception, and not directly related to any number or value. Why do I want to invest? You want to buy shares of stocks because your money goes up with the company. This means your money increases passively over time if you do it correctly. How much it goes up depends on how well you can pick a good company, but there are safer methods to invest. How much can I make by investing? In the past 100 years, the S&P 500 index fund went up an average of 10% a year. 10% is a good average for you to expect over a long period of time. It might not seem like much, but if you invest just $350 every month in the index, you'll be a millionaire in 35 years. It's as simple as buying the index in the symbol VOO, and adding money to it every month no matter if it's down or up. It's possible to beat 10% a year with riskier investments like single companies. We see popular technology stocks like Netflix or Amazon go up over 500% in less than 5 years. This means it's possible to multiply your money by 5 folds, or even 10 folds over a few years. 90% of traders cannot beat the index, or 10% a year, when looking at long-term returns, should I invest in the long term or short term? There's a much higher chance of you making good money if you invest for the long term. This means choosing a company or index, and leaving money in it for 10 years or longer. This is because short term stock trading is not easy and requires constant research. Emotions will get the better of most people, causing you to sell low and buy high instead of the opposite. How much do I need to start investing? You'll want to have no debts before you invest. This is because debts usually carry interest rates of 10% or higher a year. As stated before, this is not easy to beat. Once you have no debts, you'll want at least $1,000 before buying your first stock. Most brokerages charge a fee of $5 to $7, so you lose 1.4% of your money just buying one company. If you are able to use Robinhood in America, then you can start with any amount because there are no fees. Can the market crash and lose all my money? The market can crash and if you were invested in an index like the S&P 500, you might lose anywhere from 20 to 60% of your money. This is usually short term, meaning if you wait it out just a few years, it'll likely bounce back to zero and then green. The index goes back up as long as America as a whole isn't destroyed. It's been almost 10 years since the last market crash, and on average, it crashes every 10 years, this means there's a pretty high chance of a crash coming up. It's not a bad idea to hold more cash and invest just a small chunk of your money in preparation. Single stocks can definitely lose you more money. We see stocks like Snapchat going down 70% since their IPO, meaning you could lose $700 of a $1,000 investment in Snapchat. This is why long-term, passive investing is much safer and can still make you rich over time. How much you lose or gain will depend on your capabilities to research good stocks. You might have many more questions about the stock market. The best plan is to learn as much as you can before you invest. This doesn't have to be hardcore book reading, you can start with YouTube videos. I have many videos teaching the basics of investing in my channel. YouTube has so many good channels on investing now, you can learn everything you need to know on YouTube. Step 2, Opening a Brokerage Account To trade stocks on the stock market, you'll need a brokerage account. Depending on what country you are in, there are many options. America has a very simple to use app called Robinhood which allows free trades. This is a huge advantage since buying and selling a stock usually costs $14, or 1.4% of your $1,000 investment. To open your account, it's as simple as going to your app store and downloading Robinhood. They need some basic information like email, username, password, address, and social security number. 
you will be asked to link your bank account to transfer money in. It's a very simple process and this works the same way for most brokerages online. Robinhood is very basic and lacks some more advanced features. If you want a more advanced brokerage, there are options such as TD Ameritrade, E-Trade, or Fidelity. Keep in mind most brokerages charge you a fee of $7 a trade, so you'll want to buy a minimum of $1,000 per stock. This is about 1.4% loss just from fees. The more money you spend on one trade, the less percent the fee will cost you. Another brokerage you can use is your personal banks. It's simple because your account is automatically linked to your bank, but it might not have all the features you want. Robinhood is the best for beginners in America. Canada has brokerages such as your personal bank, Questrade, and a free platform coming soon called Wellsimple. Step 3. Choosing your first stock. The easiest way to lose money in the market is buying a stock you don't understand. This is because emotional trading is the number one killer of gains. If you just bought a new company from China that you didn't understand, it goes up 20% in a day and you think you're a genius, the next week it's down 70%. The average trader will sell it when it's in the red, losing 70% of your money. This one trade means you'll need a 330% gain to get back to even. A $100 investment going down 70% means you're at $30. To get back to $100, you'll need 330%, not 70%. Remember this the next time you want to invest in a hot stock you read about in an article. This warning means you should only invest in companies you understand, something you see every day. You can start by looking at your room, maybe you love your iPhone, check out Apple. Maybe you've used Windows all your life and love your Xbox, Microsoft is a good start. You've had Netflix since the beginning, Google Netflix stock to see how they work. Our first stock should be something close to your heart. Find that special company and we can start the research. Research is as simple as going to Wikipedia and then googling your company while reading up on everything. After an hour, you'll have a pretty good idea of how they make their money and what they do. If you google a company's 10k, this is an extremely detailed look at the company and their finances, good for more advanced investors. Once you have knowledge about your company, we can value them in the next step. Step 4. Valuing a stock. As a beginner, all these numbers will only serve to confuse you until you've had a few months of trading experience. I'm going to give you just one number to start with. The most used valuation number is the price to earnings ratio. This is all you need to know right now. Most stock valuation numbers use ratios because stock price doesn't matter and can pretty much be any number the company chooses. This means we have to compare that number to something else. The price to earnings ratio compared the price of a stock to their profits. Let's say you love Apple, Google their stock after the last step and see their current stock price. It says $220, so far this is very simple, one share of Apple is $220. Understand that this number means nothing, one stock could be $1000, another could be $100, they might have the exact same value. So let's compare this $220 to something else, how much profits Apple made? Apple made $11 in profits for every Apple stock out there. There are 5 billion shares of Apple, so each share made $11. Since each share costs you $220, we can divide 220 by 11 to see their price to earnings ratio, which is 20. This means their stock price of $220 is 20 times what they made in profits. Why is this number important? Think of buying a stock like buying the whole company. Let's say Apple was a much smaller company that sells apples. The entire company costs only $220, and in the past year they made $11 of profits. Would you buy that business for $220, knowing that business will be giving you $11 back a year? This is why the P.E. ratio is important. Profit generated by that company tells you how well they're doing, and their value. The average P.E. ratio right now is 23. Apple is 20, this means they're a better deal than average, the lower the P.E. ratio, the better. We can see the top 5 technology companies right now have pretty high P.E. ratios. Amazon is on 140, Netflix is on 154, Google is on 48, and Facebook is more fair at 23. Looking at P.E. ratio alone, we see Facebook and Apple as the better value of the five. Of course we can't use one ratio to judge a stock, but it's an important ratio. After you learn more about stocks, you can use ratios such as price to sales ratio, looking at their revenue, price to book ratio, looking at how much the company is worth in cash after debts are paid, debt to equity ratio, telling you about how much debt they have, and many other numbers, all combined to tell you what kind of value you're getting. Step 5, creating a complete portfolio. As a beginner, you definitely want a more passive portfolio, with a percent of it invested in single stocks. We can do something similar to my personal portfolio, with 50% in index funds. You can't go wrong with the S&P 500, which contains 500 big American companies. For single stocks, you'll want to choose a few that you really understand. I wouldn't recommend more than 5 stocks, because it's not likely you can keep track of more than that, or understand them. For single stocks we can start with 3 low P.E. ratio companies like Apple, Facebook, and Microsoft. All three are pretty safe and will likely not drop a huge amount in the future, more likely keep going up. Your single stocks should be based on your area of knowledge, meaning companies you actually understand. 
This could be companies like Walmart, if you personally shop there. Maybe you like Shopify and see the potential for profit from it, then research that one. Try looking for companies with low PE ratios for a better value. We can also add one or two risky stocks. A risky stock in my portfolio is a marijuana stock. We can put 5 to 10% in a company like Canopy Growth. A complete portfolio with only $10,000 might look something like this. $5,000 in VOO, the S&P 500 index fund. This will likely go up 10% a year if held for 10 years or longer. In the short term, the market could crash and drop 50%. In single stocks, choose four companies you really like and depend on daily. It might look something like this. 1,000 in Apple, 1,000 in Microsoft, 1,000 in PayPal, and 1,000 in Google. And for the last $1,000, a risky stock like Canopy Growth, Tesla, or AMD. Risky stocks are usually ones with huge P.E. ratios, where investors are speculating on future profits being much higher. Step 6. Keeping up with current events and stock price. You'll want to use these first stock buys as a learning tool. Keep an eye on your stocks and see how they move in reaction to the news. Some days might be green because of an announcement saying they had more sales than usual. A company like Apple might post record numbers for iPhone sales. Tesla might announce they met production numbers on their new cars. Good news and bad news has huge effects on the stock in the short term. In the long term, fundamentals like their P.E. ratio matter a lot more. To keep up with the latest news, it's as simple as going to Yahoo Finance and finding your stock. You can also keep track of them in a simple watch list from Yahoo Finance as well. It will look like this, with the percent gains and losses of the day. After a few months to a year with your first stocks, you will get a feel of the market. You can start trading more if you want to be a swing trader, or just hold on for life. The more time and experience you have in the market, the better investor you'll become. You should definitely join my stock market group even as a beginner. I explain every single trade I make, so you'll gain a lot of experience fast. There's instant email updates along with daily updates of my full $300,000 portfolio. I tell you guys about my feelings for the current events based on my stocks, written in very simple to understand words for beginners. If you're looking to learn quickly, click the link in the description or comment section to join. It's 50% off for life, but this coupon will not last because we're almost full, so join now before it's over. Subscribe and hit that bell for more stock market videos. I make them every day to keep you smart, and leave a like if you're new to investing. Keep watching to learn about stocks, the monk way.